it going, folks? Mike with New Ag. In this video today, we're going to go over the parameters that I set my T60X to when I'm doing pasture land work. What I did here, I got started with flying in M+. M+, is basically you go into your controller and you pick the parameters. How high to fly, how fast to fly, and how many gallons to the acre. So on this project, we're doing seven gallons to the acre, and I have my micron size, the droplet size, set at 500 microns. We have a slight breeze. We're right at six mile an hour out of the east, which is blown that way. Nothing off label, we're staying on label. First, I set the parameters, how high I want it to fly, how fast I want it to fly, and the micron size. Then I manually flew it, and what I'm doing is I'm basically just using the sticks to adjust the heading of the drone and the forward speed. If I hit max forward speed, then it'll stop at that miles per hour, what I have set into the parameters. Once I fly it manually, then I create that, hit it save as a field, it'll create that as a field. Then I go right back into my parameters and set those parameters, and then it flies its auto route like it's doing now. Because the wind is from the east blowing that way, I will have this boundary side going down the fence row out further because my drift or the wind is blowing in the product inward. That way we get coverage all the way out to the end. But really easy on these projects doing pasture land work. This is a broadleaf killer, so it won't kill the grass if there's grass uh, you know, on the outside edges like yards or something like that. Really nice stuff to work with, what we're doing here. We got some apple trees in this pasture land. Not horrible, I just created it as an obstacle. So what I did is once I actually had the field made for what I'm going to be spraying, I then set it as an obstacle point by flying the drone around the tree, I could do it that way. And another way I did it in this project is I also created it as, as a circle. So what I did there is I went to the middle of the tree, looked down with my camera, and then created a circle and then drug the circle out to make it bigger to go around some of these trees. If you have trees that are decently shaped in a circle, you can do that as well. But sometimes you just gotta fly around it to create those optical points. And the way I do that is I lock my aircraft to the cursor of the controller and then I have a hotkey on C3. My T60X is coming back right now. I'm gonna get another load and we'll send it back out there. I like to grab uh, my drone and land it manually because if I let it come down, do it on auto, it does get close to the area that it took off, but because I'm flying in GNS mode, which is GPS, it's not as accurate and it can drift, you know, two to three feet. So when I land it, I'm doing it in manual and I shut the radar off to do that because once the drone is coming down, it'll sense the trailer as a vehicle and it'll tell you, hey, there's a vehicle below you. Are you sure you want to auto land? If it's in auto landing mode. So when I'm flying it in manual, I shut that radar off and I can come right straight down on the trailer without needing to pause and go through that step. So on the T60X, obviously I have the upgraded tank here. It comes out of the box with a 13.2 gallon tank. That is for most of your you know, normal type of spraying where you're doing two to three to five gallons per acre. This is what's called the Orchard Kit on the T60X right now. What the Orchard Kit is, it has four nozzles, it has 15.9 gallon tank, it allows you to carry more with you in the field but it's really made to do heavier gallons per acre or orchards where you're blowing it down. You'll see what I'm flying right now with the four nozzles turned on and flying forward really fast, it really makes a mess out of the drone. It's not what it's designed for, but because I'm doing seven gallons to the acre, I wanna be able to have more forward speed and that's why I have the four nozzles turned on. Even though it makes my drone a little bit of a mess, I'm willing to deal with it so I can fly faster to get those acres covered. Okay, Lana brought it up if I'm good on battery. Oftentimes when we're doing row crop, we're doing two gallon work, it's carrying the load with it longer in the field and so it'll use more energy in the battery. Here we're doing seven gallons to the acre. I'm able to do two loads on one battery because it's going into the field and getting that load dumped off, not needing to use as much battery. So I went out there with 100%, I did seven gallon work, I returned with 65% and I filled it up again and now we can send it right back out. All right, here we go. Underneath the power lines again. 
All right, once I get it out into the field, I hit resume, and then I swipe and send it into its automation. As you can tell right here, that circle, that is where I dropped the obstacle point and created it as a circle and not just flying around it, dropping points. The drone remembers where it ran out of fluid. Now, it doesn't necessarily always go right back to where it ran out of fluid. It figures out the most efficient way to continue the spray project and then maybe later let's say it was a three-quarter row like just now it said it makes more sense let's just go right there because i got a short run but sometimes it might be you know way up there where it left off it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to go back there at the start it's going to go to the field and start the quickest point and then clean that up at a later time Another thing here, the reason I have the drone flying this direction is because the wind is blowing this way, so I get overlap equally. It is running this direction because of the efficiency. The computer figured out that that is the most efficient way. Say I had a wind in a different direction, I might go in and manually override what direction I want the drone to fly. First, it's going to do it on its own to figure out what is the most efficient way to fly it. But if I see that there's a wind issue, I can always change that manually in my settings. All right, one more load. I was able to take, it was 11 and a half gallons. I took it out there and it sprayed it off and I still have 28% battery. Go ahead and yank this thing out of here. These batteries weigh about 35 pounds. I've not had a problem with, you know, changing them out throughout the day. Of course, it does start getting heavy. I'm gonna check my fluid level and then pump the rest of it in there. How I knew that I had just enough mix in my tank is when I flew around it, I knew that this is going to be 12 acres. And so, you know, you do 12 times seven, that's going to tell you how many gallons you need. That's how I did that. I'm actually not that smart. Yep, look, boom, perfect. Alrighty, let's see here. Last load. Now it does want to fly this boundary, but I've already flown the boundary in Manual Plus. So I'm just letting it do its straight lines. It's gonna go out there, it's gonna spray two more straight lines, and then I'll have a tiny little bit of product left, and then I'll bring it over here and hit this edge one more time, going down through there manually. Last time he wanted us to hit this to try to knock that out, so that's what we'll do. Go ahead and send this thing out here. All right, there we go. Hit resume, slide the bar, and away she rips. Now I'm done with the straight lines. I'm gonna go ahead and end this field and exit. Now here you can see everything that I've sprayed, the green lines. I'm gonna go back here, go to manual, come into manual and plus, and all my parameters are already set there that it did last time. I'm gonna go ahead and fly down here to the fence row and spray that fence row. I'm gonna be underneath the power line, so I'm gonna really watch this thing like a hawk. Here we go. Moving forward, I got power lines above me, fence line below me. Gotta make sure I don't go up and don't go down into the, the fence row, because I'm trying to clean up this fence row here. I'm just gonna go a little slow. All right, get into the pole there. I'll slide it out, go around like this, and then I will slide it back in, keep going. Come on, about right there. And now I'm gonna fly her down the fence row. You see how far over I had to come to blow it over? I just got a little bit left. I'll just M plus this. Five feet's a little low. It don't like that five foot. Emergency obstacle avoidance. Got a little bit left and then we're done. Alrighty, we're out. We can end it. Alright, so now I'm gonna go ahead and get this uh, drone cleaned up, run water through it, just get all that uh, product out of there. Get some water, rinse her out a little bit. And then uh, fill this up with water, and I will let the, I'll run it through the nozzles. So I'm gonna go in here, go to sprayer, come down here, and clean hose, hit start, and I'll pump it out all four. That looks good, right? All the herbicides should be off now. 
All right, put a new fresh battery in for when we get to the next job. Wrap her up, fold her up. One important thing that I gotta tell you while I wrap this drone up, forgot to mention when I'm doing herbicide work, oftentimes I keep my route spacing more narrow than I do when I'm doing fungicide. So on this project here, I think I was right at 24 feet, maybe 24, 25 feet when I'm doing herbicide. Just wanna make sure I get a good overlap to get a good kill. gonna wrap up this video but I just pulled up to the next video that's about to start so make sure to hit that subscribe button give it a thumbs up we'll see you guys on the next one on the way here I ended up losing my cap to my tank and luckily we were time lapsing I watched the footage back seen where the cap flew off got the dirt bike off gave it a little went went and picked up the cap now we're here we might be running all night long anyhow we'll see you on the next video thanks for watching that's how I do my parameters when I'm doing some herbicide work, doing some pasture land. I'm out. Let's go spray, Landon. I'm, I'm stopping that one, but it's time to spray.